Okay, shine the laser, guys. I can't see it. Keep shining the laser. Right here. Got it? Okay, yep. Yeah, I got it. So a few weeks ago, I was attending an event at the Monroe Institute in Virginia, USA, and I had all the sky watching equipment set up. It was actually an event that was exploring the connection between consciousness and UAPs. Uh, we were set up on the one night and somebody had spotted something. And so I went over to the camera and everything's running and I just had to, you know, find it in the big screen. You know, we had one of the guys point it out with a laser, draw a circle around it. And I managed to get it in the screen in the wide angle plus the zoomed in stuff, the night vision, the full spectrum. And I was watching it, and it lasted, oh gosh, about 42 minutes, and it was flashing, but it wasn't moving. Uh, it was early in the morning, oh, I don't even know the time, but it was after midnight, and finally I was getting tired, and I had to shut it down, but I, I had it for 42 minutes before I decided it was time to pack up. <clears throat> so basically, uh, you know, I thought, oh, it's maybe a geostationary satellite. So I sent it to Dave here. Dave's the National Director of MUFON Canada. And he took it and he actually called me and he says, Rob, which way were you facing? And I said, east. And he said, well, then it's not a geostationary satellite. And I guess at that you point, you pick those, it up yeah, because you, can, you did the analyzation. You can of it. only see them in the south and you were pointing east. It also ruled out a lot of planets and bright stars. Uh, but more so, I found it very interesting. The first thing I noticed is the intensity was never repeatable or the speed so it would flash super bright and maybe dull dull mm -hmm. and then super bright again it was non-repeating for both frequency and intensity um, <clears throat> so you moved it within a minute and you locked your system and, and you had a very stationary uh, shot of it for 41 minutes so I used that 41 minute um, clip and I put a tracker on it and I tracked it and yes it did move and that's what I told you and I was so excited about it so over the course of 41 minutes but how minutes, much did it move it well we're looking millions of miles out in space, possibly. How could I give <laughs> right, that? Right. But I mean, on my screen, it moved a quarter inch. Right. And in, in, that mine, time. in mine, that was two grids, from one grid to a second okay. grid. Where the stars, uh, I locked the tracker onto the star, so as the Earth rotated in that 41 minutes, the grid rotated. Got it. But the flasher, which everybody knows we call flash bulb, and everybody right. runs, that's what flash bulb means, there's something in the sky that's flashing. That flash bulb moved independently of the stars but not only that in that 41 minutes i know you said you were tired it actually faded slowly away as if it was moving further away or losing energy um, because it was moving i concluded it was moving further away from your view and it moved you know if we're looking a million miles out it moved a million miles i don't know we can't judge the distance when you're looking up at the stars so now tell me why was it not a geostationary satellite because you weren't looking the right direction you can only see those in the northern hemisphere when you look south because, because they're, they're all around the exactly equator right, and yeah. you're looking east and you can't see the equator from where you were in monroe uh and i checked that with google earth and google maps and all this good stuff so i know you weren't looking at a satellite and geostationary stat satellites track with the earth they don't move so it'll look like it's just sitting there it just sits yeah yeah and uh you really don't see them because if it was flashing because the sun hit it it's only gonna last about 15 minutes or less mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the sun changes and the earth is moving so there's no way you're going to see a flash for 42 minutes yeah and i gotta tell you dave when we were in peru and chile we did get some geostationary yes. satellites because i had the cameras facing south the time lapse yeah and i and over the period of the evening you know, scrolling through the time lapse, I did see lights that were just sitting there that would come on and, and they would away. go out over about 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. Geostationary satellite. Exactly. And there's quite a few of them, but there's nothing. Um, first of all, I also did some checking with NASA. There is no uh, space debris that is basically stationary. Right. Okay. All And, and it wouldn't flash for the long either. It'd be like a satellite, how it reflects the sun and then disappears. 
Um, there is nothing moving under 10,000 miles per hour in our space, of the space debris that would cause a flash that bright. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, they're averaging from 15,000 to 17,000 miles per hour. So it's going around pretty damn fast, and you would have seen that. And it's not that far out. So you're talking anywhere from 250 miles to, what, 1,200 or right. 2,000 right. miles out. Right. So um, I thought that was very interesting, but basically my forensic tracker said that this thing moved mm -hmm. and the intensity started, let's say, one lux, it ended mm -hmm. about half a lux okay. at the end. So it was definitely moving away or losing energy. You can't conclude one or the other. Uh, but you know, that got me all excited because this was not man-made. It couldn't be. Okay, it's so what, what was your final conclusion on Totally that? unknown UAP. Okay. Yeah, it is, is a MUFON uh, uh, unknown UAP or UFO.